دواء الأربعين بلد يا رجال عينونا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عسى نحن بفضل الله We are also always asking support Support As you, you hear throughout the dhikr We say لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Ya Rabbi, we have no power, no ability, except what you grant us of power and ability. But we human beings, we have, we have no, no claim. Even, even our existence is by His will and power. We are, our condition is complete ajiz, complete, complete inability. Complete weakness. That's why some ulama says that they, this is uh, quoted often. Whoever knows himself knows his Lord. And some New Age people, New Age Sufis or New Age whatever they like this, because if you know yourself, you know your Lord. So they think that there's hulul, that we have some. That the divine is in us. Therefore, if you know yourself, you'll know your divine. But this is the wrong understanding. Man arifa nafsahu faqad arifa rabba. Who knows really himself, his weakness, his inability, his dependence and neediness, knows his Lord. Because he's receiving everything. You are, we are getting everything. We are receiving everything, all means of our being coming to us. Who's magnificent Lord? <laughs> Who is that Lord? <laughs> so you know your his adama by your meekness. You know his power by your weakness. You know your inability by his absolute ability to do as he like. This is the reality. Of our existence and Sayyidina Muhammad and all the prophets before him came to teach us to teach us La ilaha illallah La hawla wa la quwata illa billah Bani Adam Sayyidina Muhammad is a perfect abd we, we couldn't say we couldn't say what we wanted to say today in Juma. we watered it down because people nowadays, most people are not ready to understand. Allah says, I have, I have the maqsad, the aim of creating this creation, creating human beings and jinn is to be worshipped. Your mission statement, we are created to know him and worship him. To know him and bow down. To know him and understand what we just said. To be in complete obedience and ta'a to that magnet. Who are you? He's one one shaykh, he says, if you're not happy with with his with with your life, go find another earth to live on. That is not his. <laughs> Breathe another air. This is the reality. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Ahl al-Tasawwuf and Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the ulama al-Amilin, the ulama that really were applying what they know, they say that the maqsad of this creation is your Prophet. That the reality, when we, we quote, لَوْلَاكَ لَوْلَاكَ لَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْأَفْلَاكَ If it wasn't for you, and they say, oh, hadith ضعيف. But you forget that we're not talking about the hadith. We're talking about Qur'an. Allah is saying, my goal of creation, out of creation is to be worshipped, to be known. You worship what you don't know? If you don't know what you're worshipping and you're making sajda, what are you making sajda to or who you're making sajda to? You don't know who you're worshipping, what you're worshipping. Therefore, you must know who knows Allah. Who knows Allah? Your Prophet knows Him. Anyone knows 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows Allah. Who is Subhana Ladi Asra bi Abdihi? Who has granted the title of Abd? Who is the real Abd? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So he is Maqsad bin Wujud. So when you read in Salawat, uh, Allahumma salli'a, Wasitatul Wujud wa Sabah fi kulli mawjud. Imam Sayyidina Ibn Mashish. That he is the means from which, for the reason why Allah created this creation. And is Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Because no one worships Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, knows Allah like him. And Allah wants to be known and worshipped. We are a gravy, as they say. We come because of him. Our existence because of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu We're not, because what, what do we know? When we make sajda, what are we? Where are we? What's in our hearts? <laughs> That's the truth. Realities. When we're standing, Allahu Akbar. What? What is? If we really, if we really have i'tiqad and belief that we are in the presence of our Lord, this is so. So when when we when we talk about honoring a Sayyidina Muhammad and all this and he's Abdullah, we haven't we haven't transgressed creation. He is Abd, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salam, but the perfect Abd, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when we say that you have to, <clears throat> we're saying today you have to have, you have to be in good terms with with that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because Allah says. No other door you can come to me, to me except through Muhammad Rasulullah. Won't be accepted from you. All previous nations, they don't accept Prophet Sallallahu They've cut themselves off. They must accept Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu to be allowed to enter. So, he came to teach us good manners. He came to teach us to something about our Lord's magnificence, he came to teach us how to be obedient to him, how to show humility, how to show ubudiyya, uh, how to show uh, respect and reverence. That's what he wants you to do. Because you will one day stand in that presence. And why, why we need uh, the Prophet why we why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't uh, ship with angels books for everyone guidance is through guides Allah says if there were angels walking on the earth we would have sent to them an angel to teach them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us prophets and after prophets awliya because man ata'a man <coughs> If you obey Prophet, you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no distinction. If you love Prophet, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no distinction. As they like to make it. You love him too much. So it's, no, if you love him too much, you love Allah too much. What's the difference? Why you love him? Because he's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a, a, a trick. A, they try to trick people out of their faith, faith and aqeedah. There's no limits on muhabbat for Nabi Sallallahu We never, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, uh, during his time, it was incumbent on the Prophet, on all the Sahabas to obey him. If you disobeyed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you disobeyed Allah. You cannot, you have to obey. But what is the, the, this ex He's teaching us obedience. We will never get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is beyond our ability to know. But He sent us His perfect manifestation of Rabbi Abd. And He said, That is my beloved. If you obey Him, you obey me. He is my Khalifa. You follow Him, you follow, you follow the right way. 
هي إذا سيرات المستقيم على مستدعى سنة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا محمد we don't like to say سيدنا he is the one he is the سيرات طيب after that everyone on their own صلى الله عليه وسلم he said علماء أمتي كأنبياء بني إسرائيل and he said العلماء ورثة الأنبياء he says the علماء of my nation are like the prophets of Bani Israel. The علماء العاملين. علماء that learned and applied and followed in an inherited from Sayyidina Muhammad. Those علماء are like the prophets of Bani Israel. And they are, he says, they are the waratha, they are the inheritors. This is where tariqas are. This is why we follow the 42 tariqa. Because we are cheating ourselves when we say we are real obedient. Unless you you obey somebody who you deem nearer and dearer to Allah than yourself, how are you going to uh, you how are you going to understand? How are you going to to say I obey Allah Subhanahu? Because we have nafs al ammar al su, we have ego that is not interested in anything except this physically. All it wants joy, enjoyment, video games, movies, food, sports, nothing else. And we have shaitan, Satan, we all know, shaitan, he's an enemy for you, take him as enemy. He is out to get you. And then we have our vain desires, we have our uh, cravings. And then we have love for this fani dunya, the materialism. Those four enemies. How Prophet how he turned the Sahaba from uh, people of no manners to people of the best manners. That's the tariq. That's the way. And the turuq, all the 42 tariqas, the ways, they emulate that process. The Mashaykh, you come, if you find a true Shaykh nowadays, and you are with these inheritors, and you obey them as long as they are advising you and asking you to do what is according to the Sharia, that is what Tariqah is. And the two Tariqahs are, are, are coming to us from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, رضي الله عنه وأرضاه أن سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب خرم الله وجهه رضي الله عنه وأرضاه. Those two were the only two companions according to مولانا الشيخ نازم بن شيخ. Were the only two companions who never objected to anything Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said or did. مولانا used to say سيدنا علي was the shadow of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhuma was fani. He, he said, Sayyidina Muhammad, it is said that Prophet Sallallahu said, if you want to see somebody who died before dying, then look at the face of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. He, he left, died to his nafs, died to his desires, died to his likes and dislikes. What the Prophet wants is what he wants. What the Prophet likes is what he likes. Those two, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim used to say, they are the only two amongst all the companions who reached their trust. Prophet gave them their trust in his life. And it's no coincidence that the 42 tariqas come from these two uh, great sahabas. And the tarbiyah in the way is that we're not saying we're mentioning this because nowadays the trend is that no one listens to anyone. Everyone does as they like. Everyone understands as they like. Everyone is learns reads a couple of books and then they are muftis online <laughs> and then they are teaching what they 
making fatwas about this haram, bid'ah, kufr, shirk, this stuff. Uh, and that, that process has been interrupted for most people. People used to sit with, they look, they used to look and search where there's, someone says there's a wali, wali Allah, or someone used to say there's a alim rabbani, a person of uh, real connection. And they used to travel long distances to be with that one because they know the value. And we said this before. It is a saying, so he says, if the person you are learning from, if his gaze does not benefit you, his words are not going to benefit you. Because the gaze of a real alim is, as Hadith Qudsi says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi on the tongue of his prophet that those ulama I become their ears they, with which they hear I become their sight with which they see so when they're looking at the people they are looking with that light if you come to their presence and you sit with them even if they don't say anything just their suhba, their connection with them and sitting with them and being in their presence is enough. Allah. Nothing else. Even if they don't open their mouth and say anything. Those are awliya Allah. And those are now, because of the lack of belief amongst the people, for the most part, they don't show anything. They don't. The awliya, 124,000 of them, they hide these things. Because people stop believing. But, and this is it, the truth, if you sincerely ask for guidance in your hearts, Allah will send you to one of them. That's the reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to be always under the gaze of His true servants, awliya. Grant us to be. Followers of two awliya, we know my tawfiq, the hormatil habib, the hormatil fatah.